This is fascinating folks, just got here to the little pond in New Jersey and check this out! We got a little warning sign over here, blue green algae in lake, please do not enter or allow animals in the water! I love how they added over here, you know, potentially harmful. I mean nowadays nobody really likes liabilities, you know what I'm saying? And if you guys watch my YouTube videos, you know, Leo Shang be putting the little photo tank in the water, you know, always releasing the fish in the water. Shake my head, man. Many dangers in New Jersey. Any anyways, let's get the video for today started. Uh, earlier today, I was looking at my computer, in my computer, right, kind of deciding what I want to do for the month of January. It is the tundra, and it is only going to get colder, right? This is the beginning of the winter. So I've been thinking, you know, what exactly do I want to target other than the musculunge for the month of January, right? I kind of stumble, stumbled upon my catfish folders and I got to tell you, I mean, for the flathead catfish, the Pilodictus olivaris, I've done fairly well. My PB is like in the 30s pounds. The blue catfish, the Ictalurus furcatus, I've done fairly well too. PB is like in the 30 pounds or so. I'm satisfied with that for now. But the channel catfish, the Ictalurus punctatus, uh, my PB is not even in the double digits. It is a measly eight and a half pounder or seven and a half pounder, something like that, that I caught last year. So I decided to kind of pursue the catfish for this winter for a little bit. And you know, when pursuing catfish, you got to have the prime bait to catch this fish, right? I don't know what you guys use in your area, but in my area, the shad is really good. I'm talking about like a chunk of the geezer shad, the Dorosoma sepedianum, right? Or sometimes I go down to Jersey and I catch some of those Atlantic herring or hickory shad. I don't know exactly what they are, but the meat is also very good, very oily. The problem is I run out of cut bait and I don't have anything to use for the catfish right now. The shad is not really available. So I came all the way to New Jersey today to kind of stock up on the cut bait. This is the main mission for today. Now, I'm not going to be fishing this algae infested pond. I'm going to be fishing another place. So let's go to the fishing spot and let's go catch some prime cut bait. You all think I'm joking or something. I'm not one to believe in conspiracy theories or something, but there has been a cop following me here the whole day since I got to this town. I kid you not. I was doing the intro right at the pond over there and you can see the car all the way at the back there. That's a cop, my man. <laughs> Anyways, let's go to the fishing spot. Ladies and gentlemen, you must be thinking that I am joking, right? But I am not joking, okay? In the past, let me just show you guys. In the past, I have been stopped in New Jersey, in this town, four times already because of this, okay? I don't know, for some reason, people around this town, they like to call the cops on me because they think I'm around carrying some type of firearm or something. Even though it clearly says Plano over here, right? And this is made of cloth. You know what I'm saying? Years ago, I was fishing over there, just carp fishing, and three cops came up on EPF, man. I kid you not, bro. Officer came out of the car with a hand on the weapon, you know? Oh, uh, sir. What do you have in there? Dude, I was terrified. I was like, dude, it's just fishing rods, you know? And the dude kind of saw me carping, right? All the cops kind of realized, oh, it's just fishing rods. Nobody even apologized, man. They just said, be careful when you walk around here. I was like, what the heck? But anyways, right? This is just the stories. I'm here at my fishing spot. Let me just show you guys real quick. We got some new structure at the fishing spot, right? If you guys watch Extreme Full of Fishing, you know exactly where I am. I usually fish on that side, but since we got this new log over here that provides a great current break on this side, I decided to come to this side of the bridge, right? I mean, it is really the smart thing to do. So let's go catch some cut bait for them catfish later this month. Um, I contemplated using a little float and the ice fish jig under it. But after all, I decided to go high-low rig, two hooks, double chance of catching the fish, right? I am pursuing a very specific species in this area. So, I mean, it is multi-species. Let's just cast it out there. Hopefully we don't get snagged and we're going to land some fish. 
Oh, got a hit already. Tiny hit. Fish on. Wow, that was real fast. What we got here? Yeah, dude, unbelievable. Target species of the day came up just like that. First fish of the day too. Wow, just like magic, man. When you make a plan and the plan actually works, this is this is what it's all about. This is what I've been looking for, guys. This is the cut bait, right? I mean, I am going to kill this guy, so I'm not going to wet my hands, right? This is the golden shiner. My first one of 2020, the Notemigonus Chrysoleucus. And I can catch 35 of this in New Jersey since this falls in the bait fish category. And this is exactly what I'm going to do. If I can catch 35 of these today, I'm taking 35 with me because this is amazing cut bait right here. A lot of people on the channel usually ask me, Leo, how is it that you kill your fish in the most humane way? A lot of people recommend the art of the ikejime, right? Which consists of getting a needle and kind of poking the fish on the brain, causing it to be brain dead. But let's be sincere. Not everyone knows the art of ikejime, right? And more than that, not everyone knows fish anatomy and physiology. So if you go out there poking a fish and you miss the brain, what do you think happens to the fish, right? It feels more pain if it actually feels pain. An analogy to this is if you go to the hospital and you get a lumbar puncture and the nurse misses three times before inserting the long ass needle on your vertebrae, right? You are going to feel more pain. So instead of using the ikejime, what I do is I follow a more traditional approach and I just do one cut behind the back over here. I sever the connection of the body with the head, right? So that the fish, even though it has the reflexes, does not feel pain whatsoever. If it does, okay? After that, I just leave it there out there and I put inside two Ziploc bags, right? Air temperature is 40 degrees Fahrenheit, so I don't really need to use ice or anything. It's not summer. Hopefully, I will get 34 more of these and there are many more species out here for us to catch, right? So, I mean, we may end up catching a few first other species of 2020. Oh, got a hit right over there. Is it another golden shiner? Hopefully it is. No, no it's not. It's just a tiny little bluegill. Boy, oh boy. You okay there, little fella? Are you all right? Oh man, you got the jig out of her mouth all by yourself, huh? I'm proud of you. He's probably like, let me go, man, before I kill you. <laughs> well, say hi to the Lepomis macrocerus. The fish that all of you are probably super familiar with, right? One of the fish that I catch really the most every year. There you have it. Bluegill. I decided to change my approach to a float with an ice fishing jig after I found out that the golden shiner is here. Because as you can see, there's a lot of junk around here, right? You use a high-low rig, you, your chances of getting snagged are pretty high. So a float is always a wise choice for this type of circumstances. Come on, fishy, fishy. Oh, that's it. Oh my goodness, dude, what? What is this? Oh, just a bigger bluegill. Wow, okay. I thought it was going to be a different species, man. Is this bluegill from the little creeks? Because you got current, you know? They actually pull quite hard. Ain't gonna lie, there's good eating size too. I've been catching more bluegill and bluegill under the float. I'm gonna try to float a little bit more, but for real, if I keep catching bluegill, I may as well just change to the high-low rig again and go after the golden shiner because that's really my target species, right? All right, there it goes. Poof! Oh, there's one. There is one, son. Oh, <laughs> I saw it was long, so I thought it was going to be a golden shiner. Man, turns out to be a yellow perch, the Perca flavicens. I told you it was going to be a day of multi-species, especially at this spot. I think I can do some surgery to save this guy. There is just something about a yellow perch, man, that makes it so beautiful, you know? You have to appreciate the colors, the nice colors and patterns on a nice yellow perch, you know? You see that? You see the fins over here? Leo, turn it black, son. 
Yeah, you see, quite dull when it is black and white, huh? All right, put it back, brother. You got to appreciate things like that. Modern nature provides, you know? First yellow perch of the day. Boom! Already got the species this year, though. One golden shiner so far. Is this the first cast curse kind of thing? Oh, that's a bite. Oh, that's a bite, 100%. Dude, not bad at all, man. Dude, whatever it is down there, these things are fighting good. Bro, that's a golden shiner fighting. Did you just see the fight on this rod? Man, golden shiner, when they get big, people people really underestimate this fish. That's all I can say. Wow, man, this one fought, fought better than the bluegill, man. There we go. There we go. I'm on that now, boy. I found a school. That's what's up. I found this cool. Oh, no, no, no. Don't get tangled, dude. That's a big golden shiner, too. You see that? But I got tangled on the vegetation. Oh, no. Got to get this fish. Got to get this fish. Modern nature when I play rough, huh? Think he can just take uh, my golden shiner away from me? Look, my golden shiner just floating there. A waste of resources? That is not how it works, my man. That is not how it works. Oh, oh. Against my 30 pounds power pro, not so tough now, huh? Damn right, man. You think I'm gonna let that golden shiner go to waste? Modern nature wants war. C get war, man. Dude over there is looking weird at me. <laughs> not, not to say anything, but it was definitely worth it to save this golden shiner. Cause look at the size of this golden shiner. Holy cow! Look, you can compare sizes, right? Of this one with the other one, way fatter man well it's gonna become bait anyways we got three so far on a side note i knew that i was not just wrapped on the piece of log over there because if it is just wrapped on a piece of log i can just take it off right i got my little sinker back and my hook back but i was actually look i was actually on this little jig right here that someone used back in the days you know so it was fishing line always fishing line the culprit Nice cast. Oh no, did I get a fishing line? Did I get a fishing line? There's a fishing line dangling from that tree, doesn't it? Dude, I just knew it, my man. Dude, I just knew it. Yo, why is there a fishing line there, dude? Like, what the? Bro! That is just so messed up, bro. That is just so messed up, man. That's what the 30 pounds Power Pro is for. A uh, freaking fishing line between the three, is it? Right there. I hit it. I knew I hit it. Pull it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it, boy. Got it, boy. That's it. That's it. That's what's up. Come here. Come here. You want war? Is that what you want? Huh? I ruined the whole spot. That's it. Now the line's cut. Pull. Don't get my stuff again. Can you believe this kind of stuff? You know, I promise you all that EPF does not have rage attacks, okay? But if there's one thing that I absolutely hate is when people come out here fishing, you know, everyone gets snagged once in a while, right? No big deal. But some people, when they get snagged, instead of trying to get the gear back, right, they just cut their lines right away. And that is the thing that I hate the most. When people get snagged and there's like 50 yards of their line out there, I just gave a cast right over there at that spot. That's the juicy spot. There was a fishing line dangling from this piece of wood into that three. Dude, that's a lot of fishing line. You know what I'm saying? I just don't believe that if people got snagged, there wouldn't have been a way of trying to get as much line back as possible. That's why I always carry this little rod over here, even if I have the ultralight, you know, 30 pounds power pro with a two ounce sinker. Believe me, you'll recover a lot of gear. Wow, okay. I'm a little bit mind blown, I ain't gonna lie. Um, my GoPro battery just died as I was really in a fish, long fish. I thought, you know, maybe just a little yellow perch. It turned out to be, let me just show you guys here, it turned out to be a spot tail shiner. Look at this. My first spot tail shiner of 2020 
micro fishing without even knowing it. It bit on the ice fishing jig. Lucky for this fella, I'm not really taking no shiners today. So, uh, playing that on YouTube, huh? No, just kidding. He's one more way. I'm not really taking any shiners today <laughs> for bait. So, lucky for that guy. But believe me, if I was in a creek like, you know, summertime and there were some bears around, you just know that little sucker right there getting live line right away. All right, it is getting dark. It is, you know, pretty late. I got maybe, let's see, I got one, two, three, four, five golden shiners for bait. You guys can see it right over here, right? Dude, I gotta tell you something though. These are fat, okay? Sure, I only got five of them, but this is some, this is some fat good bait over there. It's gonna last me maybe two, three fishing season, uh, fishing sessions. Now, I would like to finish this video just giving you guys a little bit of the conservation talk, okay? All jokes, all humor aside on my YouTube videos. There is a reason why I use golden shiners as cut bait nowadays instead of the other stuff that I used to use in the past, okay? So take, for example, the American eel, the Anguilla hostrata. I used to use American eel for bait, cut bait, all the time, right? Uh, take in consideration the hickory shad, the alosa mediocris, or the American shad, right? The alosa sapidissima. It is actually illegal to take them in the state of Pennsylvania in certain locations, but many other states around the country allow you to take those fish, right? And I used to use it, you know, different things for cut bait out there. Now, the golden shiner is a species of fish in the United States of America that is actually farmed. Uh, you can find it in the wild, everywhere. So it's not like the population is vulnerable. It is not like the population is in decline. You see what I'm saying? It is a sustainable type of bait fish. You can harvest a few from over here, from over there. You can buy it at the tackle shop. And it is still okay because there's plenty of golden shiner out there. The American eel, the American shad, the hickory shad, and many other species out there that may be threatened, vulnerable, or whose population is in decline are not really the best choices for folks to use for cut bait, right? So at the end of the day, whatever you decide to use for cut bait, for whatever you want to catch, all depends on your conservation values, right? Sometimes, it, yeah, it is legal to, to catch American eel and take it back, but it is, is it morally correct from a conservation standpoint? This is something that, you know, food for thought, for you guys. I'm finishing my fishing session over here. Ah, maybe I'm gonna fish a little bit more just for fun after this video, but I'm finishing here with plenty of species for today. Today was a wonderful winter pan fishing, multi-species fishing, golden shiner fishing type of fishing session out here. This is definitely one of my golden winter honey holes. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned a lot from this video. I'll see you guys again, hopefully in two days. Tight lines. And take it easy. Oh, 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 first black crappie of 2020. Hey, hey yeah, first black crappie. Pomoxis nigro maculatus, man, on the little jig. That's what's up, huh? Mm hmm, beautiful. It was a good decision to not put the GoPro away after shooting the video for today. And it's staying a little bit longer too. I was actually just jigging the ice fishing jig down there without a float or anything. And I just knew that if I caught enough bluegill out of this little hole over here by the wall, one crappie was bound to come up. It's all bluegill, bluegill and bluegill, huh? Usually it is like this, that a new species showed up. It's like stacking Pokemon for shinies, you know what I'm saying? Oh, crappie! Yeah, all right. Bluegill, combination of bluegill and crappie. All right. I'm still waiting for that pumpkin seed to kind of show up, you know, but I'm not going to be that picky. If it shows up, it shows up, you know? If it doesn't show up, well, you know, I'll be happy with a combination of bluegill and crappie, right? <laughs> okay, there it goes.
Oh my goodness, bro! That's another species for 2020, man! What is going on? I end filming the videos and everything starts to show up. Got a little large mouth bass is stacked up with the bluegill and the crappie. Not the pumpkin seed that I was looking for, but regardless, another species for 2020. Man, I was just all happy over there, whistling and everything. Just enjoying my afternoon. Little green fish, first little green fish of the year came up. Oh, there we go. Finally. After millions and millions and millions of bluegills. Look at that, huh? Finally got my first pumpkin seed of 2020. <laughs> ah, the grind pays off for multi-species. Just so you guys know that the grind has been real. Check it out, huh? 4.05. I'm about like 25 minutes from sunset. And finally, the pumpkin seed decided to show up, right? I always tell you guys here on the channel, people, that you can't just put your stuff down there, right? In the hole and not work it. You got to work the hole. After gazillions of bluegills, check that out. Now, pumpkin seed finally decided to show up. Now it is time to go home. <laughs> 